Watching Super Tuesday, presented by Progressive, all part of the ACC on ESPN. Welcome to Little John Coliseum here in Clemson, South Carolina, where the Tigers will take on the number three team of the nation tonight, the Duke Blue Devils, who have lost just once on the season. Well, it's been an interesting few days, to say the least, for Clemson Athletics. They won for the first time in Chapel Hill in, well, ever, snapping at 0-59. Got it done in overtime at the Dean Dome on the weekend. And then, of course, the national championship game for football. Clemson got themselves burrowed in New Orleans last night. Just too much LSU as the other Tigers win 42-25 to to claim the national championship. And now the basketball Tigers will try to beat another Blue Blood tonight as Duke is here in Clemson. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Little John Dan Schulman and John Crispin. It may not be a vintage year for the ACC, at least to this point of the season, but one program that is playing awfully well is Duke. You know, far too often we question teams. We question the validity, the strength, the possibility, the eliteness, if that's even a word, uh, of a team when they lose. Uh, case in point with Duke losing to Stephen F. Austin. But, but don't get it twisted here. This is a really good basketball team. It's a team that's starting to separate themselves from the rest of the ACC. They've got talent. They've got depth. And they've got good leadership, not just in the form of, of Trey Jones and Vernon Carey on the floor. It's also guys like Jack White, Chapman Delorier, experienced winners in this program. Putting up big numbers offensively and defensively. Clemson feeling confident prior to the win over North Carolina. was a win over NC State. They've won two in a row, two and three in the league. And the crowd's in a pretty good mood considering the football team didn't win the national championship last night. Too soon. <laughs> I really wasn't prepared to say don't get it twisted in our open. So <laughs> I'm try to get back to reality well, that's, here. That's the first thing that you told me about you is half the time you had no idea what's going to come out of your mouth. So, <laughs> thanks for warning me early on that's that. That's how you keep an audience. Yeah. Duke, not quite as deep tonight because of injuries, but we expect them to try to take advantage of the size, whether it's hurt to carry, or in that case, carry to hurt. I think the, the carry to hurt way is a great way to just break down the defense and get them rethinking their game plan because Matthew Hurt can do the job down low. He's been great when fighting for position. Amir Sims, the big guy for Clemson, so much of the offense goes through him. He finds Alamir Dawes, a freshman from well, close to your neck of the woods, Newark, New Jersey, but he misses a chippy 2-0 Duke. Trey Jones loses the handle. John Newman the third slithers his way inside and is called for the offensive foul. Jordan Goldwire taking the charge. John Newman III had an opportunity to just sit down and make the simple pass. Would have been a 10, 15-foot jump shot. I think guys get so prepared, over-prepared, to use that Euro step. You got to feel it first. Jones looking inside, finds Carey. And what a combination those two. As good an inside-outside yeah. combo as there is in the game this season. Well, and that's Trey Jones more than Vernon Carey, not to take anything away from the finish. But when you drag the defense out, keep the big with you, and just wait, everything seems to open up. Jones averaging seven assists per game, and the Blue Devils off to a good start. Sims, left hand over Carey, and it goes. He can maintain position down there. Vernon Carey got spaced out defensively. He can get position. He's going to have his weight down there. The problem is he's also got to defend for Carey. Yeah. And Carey can step out, knock down a jump shot as well. Misses that 16-footer. So important for Clemson to defend the glass. Duke is one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the nation. Well, defending the glass means stay in position, don't chase the play. Great ball movement. And they tie it up. The bucket to Mack. It all got started with Amir Sims up top. And that's what you want to watch. Defensively for Clemson, are you chasing the basketball? Are you maintaining position? Because the position is also where you're going to be when a shot goes up. You've got to maintain rebounding position if you want to be able to finish that possession. Boy, Newman giving up a lot of size to Matthew Hurd, who dribbled it off his foot out of bounds. 5-time NCAA champion, 12 Final Fours, Hall of Famer Mike Krzyzewski in his 40th season as the head coach at Duke and always wary of the kind of defense that a Brad Brownell team can play. There's flexibility with the defense. They can switch. It's all about communication. So, uh, to me, it's more about learning where the double team's going to come from. We saw Clemson practicing that out of a zone and in man. 
Curran Scott with the ball. He's come in off the bench. A grad transfer from Tulsa, and he gets rejected. Duke also among the leaders in the nation in block shots. Cassius Stanley all the way to the bucket. Duke back on top. It's just a physical finish. Just a physical finish. Patience, sit down. He knows he can elevate over top of anybody on the floor. And he's getting better and better, isn't he? Brad mm -hmm. Brownell was just kind of a mix, you, you got to believe, of excited and relieved to get that win in Chapel Hill. And he got texts from, like, everybody, yeah, including right. a number of former Clemson coaches, Cliff Ellis, Larry Shiat, Rick Barnes, all checked in with a text to say, that a boy. Now none of us have to talk about it. 1927, 1929, yeah. you go all the way back. Yeah, everyone understands the importance of that game. And if, if Tevin Mack can get that three going, that's a game changer. That's balance on the floor that forces the defense to cover 30 feet. There's four or five guys that are going to shoot threes. Another grad transfer started his career at Texas, transferred to Alabama, now in his grad transfer year here in Clemson. And he had a nice game in the win over Carolina with 17 points. Another Duke turnover. Numbers. Dawes with a reverse. And Scott is fouled and will be at the free throw line. Boy, good energy right now by the Tigers. Yeah, a good start if you're able to turn those turnovers into an opportunity on the other end. I thought he had a chance to give it up. Who am I kidding? I wouldn't have. <laughs> he said seven assists for Trey Jones. I don't think I made seven passes in a game. <laughs> One of those two where he had three guys behind him, but it's so noisy in here, he might not have known it. I tell you, we're at a very cool vantage point here. Been a long time. I haven't done a game here since this was uh, Little John was renovated. Yeah. 99 times out of 100, we're right near center court. This is us right here. We're right over to the far right of the scores table, and there the Duke, the Duke bench is right there. Jack White and who else came in? Javin Deloria came over, kneeling right in front of us to check into the game. We're in the action yeah, so, here. So if you ever hear us whispering criticisms, it's because <laughs> Coach K is right next right to there. us. Yeah. And I'm still new. <laughs> Ball going against the Tigers. It'll be on Alamir Dobbs. It's interesting when, when I watch back, the, I watched the, the, the Georgia Tech Duke game a couple times. And when I watch it back, what I realized is Georgia Tech was most effective when they just attacked. And so far, Clemson's been the aggressor on both sides of the ball. Jordan Goldwire for three. Goldwire is averaging 28 minutes per game in five ACC games. Just a really trusted player on both ends of the floor for Mike Krzyzewski. Sims tries to answer with the other end. Stanley rips down the rebound. But trust is everything when you're looking for playing time. It's all about can I trust you to do what I ask you to do. And Goldwire makes him a better basketball team. Yeah, takes care of the ball. Terrific defender. Knocking down shots is almost a bonus. But he's getting better and better, becoming more of an offensive factor. And another Duke turnover. They've been a little loose with the ball in the early going. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. Good start, good energy to this game. Brad Brownell's team down one to Duke in the early going, coming off their win at Carolina on the weekend. Let's bring the third member of our team tonight. Here's Brooke Weisbrod. That's right. Well, after that 0-59 road record, they finally got it done. A huge win at Carolina. One Clemson love, Gabe DeVoe, even called the win on Twitter. And, guys, as you can see, even after that loss to LSU last night, this fan base is staying loyal. These fans were at the Carolina game. I said, are you guys... You know, are you all in all the time? What do they got to say? Always, all in. See? They're all in all the time. <laughs> and there's proof. January 10th, Gabe DeVoe did call it. And Carolina, I mean, it's obviously not a great year for Carolina. They're banged up. They don't have the same talent that a Roy Williams team normally has. They were still up 10 with 2.08 to go in regulation and couldn't get it over the finish line. And give a lot of credit to the guy with the ball right now, Amir Sims, who almost single-handedly led them into overtime and then to a victory. On cue. Yep. Thank you, Amir. I'd say like, he really turned it on. And the last couple minutes of the game, it's all about confidence. Who has the confidence to close the game? North Carolina has really been struggling in that department, obviously, for the past few weeks, basically since they lost Cole Anthony. 
And Clemson's starting to find themselves, understand what they want to do and who they are. Good defense by Scott on Stanley, and another Duke turnover. Clyde Trapp, you can see the big brace on his right knee, tore his ACL in the summer. Just back a few games ago, Clemson has been banged up, still without a couple of guys, but starting to get a little bit healthier as Trapp heads back to the bench. And Sims is really good because he's good passing big. He can shoot it. You have to respect the shot, which means he can put the ball on the floor and get to the basket. Now the head fakes, he plays that slow man's game. Not saying he's a slow man. Don't be so sensitive. But he plays that <laughs> slow man's game where he'll head fake you, ball fake you because of his ability to pass. Mike Krzyzewski actually said to us at shoot-around today, like how often do you play a team where the center is the point guard? Yeah, I, and I'll tell you, that, that's a lot of the NBA game, too, is you got really big passing centers. He can do that, too, although he misses the hook. And Jack White who had four threes in a win a year ago over Clemson. It brings down the rebound, feeds Trey Jones, and he knocks it down to the other end. One of my favorite things that just happened on that play was a no-call. You know, Sims kind of steps in, takes the quasi-charge, but the no-call. Don't, don't call it either way. Keep the flow and rhythm of the game going. Veteran officiating crew, Mike Eads, Doug Shows, Paul Sells, and Hunter Tyson, who had a huge three to start the comeback at Carolina on the weekend. The sophomore from Monroe, North Carolina, knocks one down for the Tigers. This is a good defensive team in Duke. The key is don't let them get set. Now, if you can attack in transition, you know, you know, as the Duke team is starting to identify threats in transition and keep that flowing into some sort of continuity, it's going to be your best opportunity on the offensive end. Multiple substitutions on both sides. Clemson's back up to about 10 healthy, pretty healthy, available scholarship players. Duke is down to eight. Wendell Moore broke a bone in his hand a couple of weeks ago. He's out at least a couple more weeks. And Joey Baker sprained his ankle in practice a couple of days ago. Stepped on Javin Delorier's foot. So he's got a boot on, on the bench. Unavailable tonight. They hope to have him back on the weekend. Here's a look yeah. at some of the missed games for Clemson. Now, Trapp is back. Kayvon Moore just back. Alex Hemingway available for Clemson. So they're starting to get a little bit healthier. You know, I'm a glass half full kind of guy, so I kind of like when you play with a, a shorter bench, especially against a team like Duke. You allow the guys that are going to play significant minutes to find rhythm on the floor. They figure out and feel the game a little bit better. And so far, you know, Duke's gone to the bench quite a bit. They're deep. But there's a difference between rotational substitutions and punishment substitutions. Right. Trust me, I know the I, I know the second. <laughs> you you were the victim of number two. Yeah, Steve yeah. Lavin always called them honkers. Bad shot was a honker. <laughs> and a honker got you a seat a on the bench. Got me sat yeah. back on the bench. Yes. Trey Jemison, a seven footer out of Birmingham, into the game for Sims now for Clemson. Second three of the game already for Tyson. So much of that's coming from them playing through the center position around the perimeter. That means you can turn the corner, get to the basket, draw defense, one extra pass. Tyson almost knocks it away. Oh, wow. Carey just cleaning things up. It just makes you feel like less of a man. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> He's a freshman. I don't know how that's possible. And it's not just the physical dominance. It's his feel for the game. It's his understanding where balls are going to come off the rim. Jemison can't get it to go down. Rebound Alex O'Connell. Harry saves it. What a cut. What a pass. It's amazing how many good things happen when the bigs are away from the basket, especially if you can pass like Vernon Carey. He's got great vision. And Carey and Sims, a couple of pretty skilled bigs in this game tonight. Timeout on the floor. This is a good one out of the early going. We're going to weather forecast, a little ACC forecast with our, in quotes, meteorologist Brooke Weisbrod when we come back. Well, generally, it's just blue skies and smooth sailing around the ACC. But this has been kind of a choppy year for the conference with more on that. Here's our weather expert, Brooke Weisbro. Thank you, Dan. And it is time to take a look at the weather around the ACC area. And let's start in Durham, where it is blue skies for the Blue Devils. A hot start at a 15 and 1. You move south, now you know it's going to be sunny in Tallahassee. But it's real hot right now, like four straight wins for the Seminoles. So they are just blazing right now. Let's move back up the East Coast, though. 
The barometer pressure has dropped in Chapel Hill. Yes, it's our hills at eight and eight. Lots of thunderstorms, lots of clouds, and lots of rain that moves up the East Coast into Syracuse, where they are still shoveling their way through the ACC at a nine and seven record. Now over in Boston, it's sunny, but is it like 15 degrees and sunny? We don't know. So keep your woolies on. If you're an Eagles fan, we're not sure yet. It's a nine and seven record, still TBD. And over in Louisville, is it mostly sunny or is it partly cloudy? Depends on who you are if you're a Cardinals fan, but a 13-3 record looking good for the Cardinals. Now it's time for your seven-week forecast. Look, look out into the ACC tournament. Come on, y'all, no surprise. Duke's going to pick up the regular season win. It will stay sunny and bright in Durham. And FSU, they're going to feel some type of way coming in strong with a big storm in the conference tournament to clinch the ACC. Dan, back over to you. <laughs> All right, thanks, Brooke. She's a natural at that. I, I, that was pretty good, yeah. especially with the barometer talk. I don't know what any of it means, but it sounded right. <laughs> Something moving up the East Coast, it sounded pretty good. Like Florida State to win the conference tournament championship, I like it. It's, it's a versatile team. They don't have the length and athleticism that they've had in the past, but I think they've got more dynamic players. And that sets you up to make a nice little run, not only in the conference tournament, but the the NCAA tournament yeah. as well. You know, Syracuse, as Brooke mentioned, it hasn't been a great start to no. the season for them, but very important win, beating Virginia uh, a couple of days ago, so that, that really helped them. Georgia Tech, an interesting program, but ineligible yeah. for the postseason, but they're... They're going to be spoilers. Yeah, the, that's exactly what they're going to be, and then beyond that, you know, do you look at Clemson, do you look at NC State, I mean, who else... Who else jumps out at you as a team that could make life difficult for the top teams in the country? It's a great question. I mean, I, that's I don't really have one right now, and I'm going to be honest. I think we were supposed to have an answer for a question like that. I just don't. Well, if you'd come to rehearsal. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I try to save my good stuff for the games. I mean, look, I think Virginia is more like a spoiler. I, I'm, I'm really impressed with Mike Young and Virginia Tech, mm -hmm. though. I think Mike Young does a terrific job coaching basketball. That's something Coach K said to us today. He doesn't coach plays. He coaches the game of basketball. The nuances. That's the way the game's being played. It's a hybrid of the overseas Euro game, high-level Euro game, and the NBA where it's all about spacing and versatility. Well, people may have forgotten because it happened back in November, but you know he's got a win over Michigan State in his yes. back pocket. You can't take that away. Another backdoor cut. You'll see it frequently from Clemson offensively, and we get a foul going against Duke. You know, we're sitting so close to the Duke bench. I heard the Duke bench yell it out, but the guys on the floor were a step behind the play. It's interesting when you're playing well, when you're you got that rhythm and flow going, you seem to anticipate a little bit better. They're overthinking the play right now. Bench saw it clearly. How hard was it to defend against a team that liked to backdoor cut as much as Clemson oh will gosh. sometimes do? Well, we did it against the old Princeton teams. Yeah. And, and even when you knew it was coming, oh, wow. Great cut and another good find. Clemson are back on top. He's very smooth, right? He makes great reads. Here it is. He sets a good screen. Matthew Hurt has to stay with the basketball, holds his screen. Remember that, kids. Hold your screen. Look, he doesn't just roll right away. He makes a read. That's what you're supposed to do. You read the defense. Well, what's interesting is he actually kind of initially popped because he can shoot the three. Yeah, and, he, and then what did he do? And then he rolled. He made a read. Right. Big time numbers for Clemson's best player. It's amazing when you find it. And, and finding it is just the physical part of the game it's that mental that confidence part of the game O'Connell for three and Carey gets an easy one well that's got a sting couple of Tigers had it right between them and couldn't squeeze it eight of the nine field goals tonight for Duke have come in the paint well they're not missing a lot of shots but they're missing opportunities to run offense with all these turnovers Trap to Mack. And out of bounds off Mack. Back over to the Blue Devils. Gosh, I really like what Clemson's doing offensively. They're just spacing you out. The back cut's uh, an option. The, the dribble handoff's an option. The dribble ball, or the ball screen's an option. It's like everything's on the table. There are no absolutes. Good luck defending it. Reminds me a little bit of Auburn. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you agreeing with me, just you know, <laughs> politely. Don't get used sure, to John. it. Sure, <laughs> John. Coming up next tonight here on ESPN, we'll head into Big 12 country, to Norman, Oklahoma, specifically number six, Kansas, which will be without Devon Dotson tonight. They will take on the Sooners. You can watch it live on ESPN and the ESPN app. Is there a best team in the country right now?
No. No, there's not. And, and that's a good thing. I think we, we like to think of that as like, oh, no one's really separated themselves. Whoever becomes the best team in, in February, March, and April, it's because they developed into who they're going to become. And that's a good thing. Quite frankly, teams that have too much talent never reach their potential. They never maximize their potential because it almost comes too easy. They win with talent. Well, when you get to the point where you're out of conference in the NCAA tournament, you win with counters and adjustments. I think the fact that Duke lost a game is a, is a positive thing. Yeah, the only loss at home in overtime to Stephen F. Austin. Otherwise, they'd be undefeated. Consensus number one. There wouldn't be any discussion about who should be number one. The Zags right now are number one. And Baylor actually moved ahead of Duke in the rankings, although Duke didn't lose a game last week. But Baylor's resume, the road win over Kansas, kind of spurring a lot of the voters to yeah, say, you know what, we've got to move on. Yeah, but you know what that means? Absolutely nothing. Right. It means absolutely <laughs> nothing. Trap. 17-footer goes down. Clemson to buy three. They're playing well. That's the second time Amir Sims has set a great screen. Either create it for himself or for his teammate. With your best players, your best screener, good things are going to happen. Stanley looking to get going. Goldwire and Jones both in the backcourt. And Stanley will get going with a three that ties it up. He's getting better and better. Isn't yeah, he? he's got that Corey Maggette to his game. You know, but I think he's That's got more offense. Maggette had a lot of highlights in his short career at Duke. Coleman with a highlight. Oh, man. Amir Sims is covering his face. Can't believe what he saw. Crowd's going nuts. Wow. Look, if it shuts me up, it's pretty good. <laughs> and, and unprecedented. Sometimes only emojis can define. Wow. Wow. I, I, mean, thought, I didn't see that coming. I mean, Javin Delorier is 6'10", and, and he can defend the rim. And but John Newman just went right at him. The whole thing was goofy. It looked like he took off the opposite leg. He dunked it with his left. Wow. Listen to this crowd. Stanley posting. And the rebound to Jemison. This place is some kind of loud right now. Wow. Newman from outside. Somebody's having some fun, my friend. Look, when you're feeling it, you got to take this shot. Some people... We thought we were impressed this morning when John Newman III helped us find our way back to our car as we were trying to get out of the building after shoot-around. Well, he has taken it to another level with this. Yeah, he did. He took off. He took off his left leg and finished with his left hand and then followed it up with a 25-foot three. I mean, when you're feeling it, you've, you've got to find the guy with a hot hand and you've got to let him fly. Dad played at James Madison. Cousin Johnny Newman played at Richmond, went on to a great career in the NBA. And what's happening so far tonight is helping to make the folks here feel a little bit better about what happened last night. Yeah, I was all excited going to break, and I brought up last night. I apologize, but <laughs> as if you should feel badly about that. I mean, look, great football game. Yep. Lost to a great, great team. Absolutely. But I'm impressed with this Clemson team. Not, not just the fact that they're in this game, but, but it's how they're doing it. Offensively, spacing you out, playing through the post out top. But defensively, they've been good on the glass. That, that's when Duke misses. Duke doesn't miss a lot of shots. Yeah, both teams shooting well. Duke has had turnover issues. Clemson has turned those into points at the other end. Stanley from the corner. Boy, Carey is doing some work on the offensive glass, isn't he? And a foul. He talks about that and prepares for the double team when he gets the ball. He's a threat when he doesn't have the ball. You almost have to force him 10 feet from the basket. He never gives up rebounding position. He times it really well. 
bats it around. I mean, that's an impressive play from a young kid. Among ACC leaders in so many different categories, scoring, rebounding, field goal percentage, blocks. You know, maybe not super uber explosive, but man, is he good. I mean, he just does everything so well. The problem is we say that because of what was here last, last year. year. You're right. You take yeah. him out of the game and we're going crazy You're about Vernon right. Carey. Yeah. No, it's just relative. That's the Zion yeah. hangover of Thanks a lot, yeah. Zion. Like, <laughs> Ruined it for everybody yes. else. That's a good point you just made. I'll, 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 I'll Thanks, put that Bank comment it. away. I, I, won't, I won't say that anymore. My mom recorded that, so... <laughs> Tyson hit a couple of threes when he came into the game. Newman stumbled, grimacing a little bit. Sims got it! That was by accident. Newman stopped in the paint. It's probably a three-second call they didn't call. But, but by accident, he stopped, and the defense stopped too, and that's how Sims was able to get wide open. Jones with a tough pull-up, in and out. Clemson has knocked down its last five shots to extend the lead to seven. Trap. And here comes Jones in transition. And a Clemson foul going against Dawes as he got tangled up with Stanley. Here's Sims around the perimeter, both as a passer and as a scorer. He, he's been incredibly effective. You see Vernon Carey just floats to the basketball. That happens all the time. You, you naturally, like the beehive effect, micro mini soccer, the, 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 the whole team just follows the ball. It's so easy to do that. But when you're covering a guy like Amir Sims, you've got to identify that shooter. See man, see ball, all those, those simple principles pay dividends at this level and so important for a guy like Sims to not have foul trouble in a game like this because of Vernon Carey and so far yeah. Sims does not have any fouls on him and he's playing great you notice he, he walls up behind and he's trusting defense to help around him where well, you see guys pick up fouls when they fight for position where they, they kind of swat and swim get over the top you've got if you've lost position just maintain your ground and look for help Cry for help. Call for help because you need him. <laughs> oh, wow. Another backdoor cut. Another beautiful feed from Sims, the beneficiary this time, Kern Scott. They are not standing around at all on offense. Everybody is moving for Clemson. O'Connell moving without the ball, but he can't finish the reverse. Just look at how much movement there is for the guys without the basketball. And look how open the paint is. That, that's why Sims is able to do that. Needs some help, finds trap. Still got time. Baseline jumper. And the rebound to Jack White. If Sims had an opportunity to just go up off the glass, finish that thing. The paint's wide open. And Trey Jones fouled by trap on a three point attempt. The back cut's one of the toughest things to defend, especially if you're trying to take wing passes away. You kind of get extended. Look, he jumps out. You know, where, where's the ball? I mean, it's so easy to get lulled to sleep. You're getting ready for that dribble handoff. So many people go to a dribble handoff. Even if you know it's on the table, that back cut, you're hoping that your backside help could be there. What a good decision it was by Jones to come back for his sophomore season. Yeah. After thinking about going pro, his shot has gotten better. And again, when he's in there, he just controls the game for Duke at both ends of the floor, really. We knew he was a great on-ball defender last year. He's taken the offense to another level this year. The initiator, the facilitator, and that's on both ends. He initiates pressure on defense just like he initiates the offense. He facilitates a good basketball game on the offensive end, and he also communicates very well defensively. That, that's... That's recipe for a good defense. It's good communication. Even if you fake it. <laughs> and they need more for him because they need more offensively from him this year because they don't have a Zion Williamson. They don't have an R.J. Barrett. They got some great players, but they don't have guys who are going to put up the point totals consistently that those two do. Good luck. Newman. Well, this Duke team doesn't, I mean, it's hard to say this because they're still high-level talent, but they don't have the elite talent that they had last year. 
so they have to be an elite team. I think they're developing into that, and they're going to have to win tough games like this. O'Connell again cutting without the ball, getting where he wants to get, but can't finish the layup. He's clapping his hands in frustration as he comes back down the court. Things have been rushed a little bit offensively. Even those finishes rushed a little bit. That happens when you're down five on the road and the environment starts to be what it is. Sims trying to back down Carey. And he does. This is going to be one and one. Vernon Carey's got to defend all the way to the three-point line and in the post. That's a lot of work. O'Connell the kick. Stanley the three. Yes. We're seeing some good offense from both teams tonight. Efficient offense outside of the turnovers. You take the yep. turnovers away. I mean, these guys are making a high percentage of shots. I would say that defensively, Duke's having to work harder than Clemson, and that's something that's a theme you want to follow throughout the course of the game. Burst to speed from Alamir Dawes. The lead is six. And I want to pay that off because the reason why they're having to work so hard is because of the space on the floor. Because of the five-out, none-in, that's going to be a travel. Five-out, none-in offense is really tough to cover. Timeout on the floor. We've got some more breaking news from Major League Baseball. Let's go back to the studio. Here's Kevin Connors. Game day Saturday from Cameron Indoor Stadium. The Duke Blue Devils. We're getting all they can handle from Clemson here tonight. We'll host the Louisville Cardinals. 6 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. I want to see if Louisville can show up for a really good team. It's been a question about that team. Where's the pulse? Where's the toughness? The talent's there. But we just haven't seen them do it against a really high-level basketball team. They're going to have a chance to do so Saturday. Brad Brownell wants a timeout. 3.09 left first half. Tomorrow night, NBA Wednesday doubleheader right here on ESPN and on the ESPN app as well. First game we'll see the Nets in Philly to take on the Sixers. And then how about the firepower in the late game, the Trailblazers and the Rockets. A little McCollum and Lillard on one side, a little Harden on the other side. Clemson 37, Duke 31. Dan Schulman, John Christman, Brooke Weisbrod here at Little John Coliseum. And some really good offense, some fun stuff, a monster dunk tonight. Great atmosphere. Mm. And the guy who had the monster dunk tried to monster dunk it again. And where's that come from? It comes from a defensive adjustment and recognition of the adjustment. Amir Sims being double teamed. Not only does he recognize the double team, his teammate recognizes the double team as well. Great cut, open basket opportunity. Not Sims has a dozen points, four rebounds, and three assists already in this game. Look, the passing big man is the future of basketball. We thought it was the three-point shooting big man. Yeah, that's great. Everybody can do it at this point. The Marcus All, the Joker in Denver. I mean, those are the guys that make the game easier for everybody else. The six foot two guard's done apparently. <laughs> <laughs> you peaked early, huh? Oh, I peaked in high school. It's okay. <laughs> Jones on the bench right now for the Blue Devils. Carey as well. And Newman comes up with a steal and is fouled by Stanley. It's always so, it's always so interesting to see how young teams handle adversity on the road. You know, when confidence is fleeting and, and your opponent's able to kind of do whatever they want to do, what do you do when your opponent's the aggressor? How do you respond? And so far, it hasn't really been good for Duke. I, I, I think there's another gear in there, and, and it may be after the half. Sometimes you just need a reboot, right? Yeah, and right now you see Stanley's the only freshman of the game right yeah. now. It's, it's White and Goldwire and O'Connell and Delorier, well, all upper class. Yeah, Matthew Hurt just got taken out of the game for that turnover. And Trey Jones coming back into this game likely to finish the half. Tip pass. White gathers it. It's an interesting lineup offensively. I'm not sure where the offense is going to come from. Yeah, Stanley would be option number one, you would think. Shot clock's down to three. Goldwire's got to force it up. 
when, when offense is an issue in terms of that lineup, it's not just where's the point going to come from. It's where's the action going to come from. Where's where's the defense rotating to? Only one made field goal for the Blue Devils in the last six minutes. What a drive by Kevin Mack. And this is the largest lead of the game for the Tigers. Deloria trying to back his man down. O'Connell off the side of the backboard. Man, oh man, is this crowd fired up and have they enjoyed the last few minutes of this one? Dawes going too quick. Taken away by Goldwire. Numbers for Duke and O'Connell will get the slam. It's actually a big one for O'Connell. He just shot one off near the shot clock. And that does play with your confidence. Just to get out, get it done, feel confident again. It's a big defensive possession for Duke right now because this is a Clemson team has been able to space out and get to the basket. Yeah, it feels like a, a big last minute here in the first half. Who can take momentum into the locker room? Mack, fadeaway jumper, too strong. Weak side rebound and a fresh 20. And I go right back to playing through Amir Sims top of the key this time if Amir Sims doesn't give up his dribble He may have a slip opportunity here. He comes for the ball screen Dawes turns the corner Oh Had Mac inside, but they couldn't connect Dawes had Amir Sims top of the key wide open Sims's man went with the basketball. He was wide open up top Sometimes you feel like you have to make the pretty pass when the simple one the throw behind is always open. Yep. Dawes will sit. Scott back into the game. Jones has returned for Duke. I say Duke dodged a bullet on that possession. That, that would have been a, a big make with a second chance opportunity and then a make. O'Connell. And another Blue Devil turnover. And Clemson's got time. Down to five. It's not who you want to have no. the ball. Not at all. Yeah. Goldwire picks his pocket oh. and missed the layup. <laughs> no. Wow, what a crazy last 10 seconds that was. Brooke Weisbrod is with Brad Brownell. Coach, an already emotional first half. What is the key to shooting over 50% from the floor and from three? Well, we're playing well. I think we're moving it and we're getting the ball to the paint, which is really helpful. And trying to play a little bit inside out when we can. Thank you, Coach. What an entertaining half. Clemson to beat Carolina on the weekend. Trying to beat Duke here tonight, and they're up by seven at the half. Stay tuned for the deep halftime report with Kevin, Seth, and Lafonso coming up after these messages. You're watching Super Tuesday, presented by Progressive. What a first half of the Clemson Tigers, led by Amir Sims. They are up seven on the number three ranked team of the day. The Duke Blue Devils 40 to 33 at the break here at Little John Coliseum. Hi again, everybody. Dan Schulman and John Crispin. Why has Clemson been so good offensively? Hey, really, it's the spacing. When you play five out, none in, and I don't even know if that's the right way to say it. When you play five out around the perimeter, no guys inside, you're going to have space to work. And when they've been able to play through the big and Amir Sims, he's a great passer. He can also attack. But look at the paint. The paint's wide open. No one's there to protect from that. Highlight dunks, and then again, turn the corner. Two guys have to step up, stop the basketball. Easy roll opportunity. And even when the defense almost does a good job, they show help. They don't stop the basketball, so you've got to start to collapse that defense. I wouldn't have been surprised if Duke went zone to start this, just to, to eliminate the rhythm that Clemson's got offensively. Clemson has won two in a row, including that long-awaited first-ever win in Chapel Hill on the weekend. They're trying to beat a top three team for the first time since 2001. And if they beat Duke tonight, it'll be the first time they beat Carolina and Duke in consecutive games since 1990, when guys like Dale Davis and Eldon Campbell were Clemson Tigers. Let's get a Duke report on the first half now from Brooke Weisberg. 
We spoke with associate head coach John Shire, who was talking about Clemson spreading the floor. He said we're, we're way more spread out than we'd like to be. And also that comes from the three-point shooting defense. We've got to block the paint out and so that we can get out and recover on the three-point shooting defense. But guys, really he had talked about toughness. And he said this is the half. We're going to find out who we are. And I would imagine, thank you, Brooke, I would imagine, John, that ball's going inside the Vernon Carey at every opportunity like he did on that first possession. Yeah, it is, and what you're going to see is he's not going to chase the basketball. That was a skip pass feed inside. He maintained his position. When he chases the basketball, he actually collapses driving lanes for his teammates. Guess you, don't, you don't really need much space for that guy, though. Strong move there for Cassius Stanley. Both Carey and Stanley now with a dozen for two, and all of a sudden they're back within three. Sims, a great first half. 12 points, four rebounds, three assists. Ran everything through him. Trap baseline. And an offensive foul. It's interesting, though, offensively, sometimes the halftime is your worst enemy. It was the greatest friend for Duke. They needed a reboot. Oh, looked like they changed the call. Well, they're going to take a look at it. Is you, you want to make sure his foot wasn't on the restricted arc. They're going to look at it. They say the halftime, kind of a reboot for Duke, but the rhythm was eliminated for uh, for Clemson. Uh, that, that's the issue. So I guess it wasn't an offense. It looks like Clemson's getting ready to take the ball out of bounds. So they have changed the call, evidently, and called it a block on Duke. And why they're going to the monitor to see who should be assessed the foul. I think it was Stanley coming over. And they got it, it right. Look, they, they, got it they got it right. Yeah. They can't go to the monitor this early to see was he in the yard yeah. or not. But the officials can get together and one can say, hey, I had a better look. I saw it. He was in the he was in the yard. So they changed the call. The monitor review, we, we are told, is to, de to determine who it was yeah. who is getting called for the foul. And it's Cassius Stanley. I hate to put this on Clemson so early, but it's important that they get the rhythm going again offensively. And that last possession was stagnant. They didn't move. The ball didn't move. Quarter three. Tevin Mack. The shot going down helps. Well, Tevin Mack knows how to have himself some fun on the court as well. Talking to people, smiling. And I'm, by people, I mean like fans, not whooping a duke or anything. But he's got all kinds of good energy out there right now for the Tigers. Yeah, that's something Coach K talked about, too, the, the body language component of basketball. It's important. It's more significant than you can imagine. It's not just body language of the guys on the floor. It's also the body language of the guys on the bench. And that last bucket, a two for Mack, not a three. We're blocked out to that corner down that far left corner. Couldn't see where his feet were. Dawes, a nice look away, but he couldn't finish the left-handed layup. Jones will step into a three. Nope. Oh, bank it in. Well, you were exactly right to say no because it was right in line uh, with our look at the backboard, but he caught a big break right there. It, it looked way off. So far off he banked it in, apparently. <laughs> Sometimes way off is better than just a little bit off. You know, it's funny. There was a time in college basketball, really in basketball in general, where this is a bad shot. People said, oh, a transition three is a bad shot. You could work for 30 seconds and then take a, a half-court heave. You might as well take the aggressive good look that you get within the first five seconds. Pressure coming here from Duke. You like it? Yeah, Clemson was prepared for this. This is what they, they, they worked on in shoot-around, was just handling that initial pressure, breaking the initial pressure, then getting it into the half-court and getting into your movement. And Duke's just got to be careful not to get too far extended, not to run two at the basketball and then give up an easy basket. Newman, strong drive. He did that on the best athlete on the floor, yeah. Cassius Stanley, too. He went body to body, created a little bit of space and elevated. There has not been an ounce of back down from the Tigers tonight against Duke. Carey with a 15-footer. I would say Newman and Mack are really difficult matchups. You know, they play physically, they play above the rim, but they can also shoot it and make great cuts. Mack a great cut and a good finish and the lead back to six.
And you know what? Because they're tough matchups, we haven't seen very much of Matthew Hurt for Duke tonight. Yes. He's had trouble, whether it's guarding Mack, whether it's guarding Newman, a tough matchup for him. And they're about to blow the roof off this place. When you have space, reads become a lot easier. And here it is. Look, you, you fake that, slip the screen, go right to the basket. It's a much more difficult finish than you realize. Three Duke defenders right there. It's funny, too. A six-point lead for Clemson feels like they're up 20. If Duke had a six-point lead, it'd be very, very ho-hum at home. Good to see this crowd in it. Mack will knock down another one. Not only is it a nine-point lead, but Cassius Stanley's gone to the bench with four fouls. Gut check time right now for the Blue Devils. Hostile atmosphere, trailing by nine. I'm sure you're saying some brilliant stuff right now, but I can't hear a word of it. <laughs> this place is sure I am. right now. Sure I am. Don't get your hopes up. <laughs> and another foul against the Blue Devils. This has been impressive. I mean, th that's a foul that is an insecurity in terms of the scheme that you're going against. You're afraid of the back cut, so you just grab. It's like in football, a defender just getting beat. You know it's going to be six points, so you just grab the wide receiver. You know it's going to be a layup. Justin Goldwire understood. Going to be a layup. Good sub here. Sims out. Media timeout coming yep. to the first whistle, 16 and under. So he can sit three, four minutes and maybe only miss a few seconds of game time. Stealing minutes. Trap, little stop and go. And hands it off to White. No Stanley for the foreseeable future right now for Duke. That's got to be the meal ticket right now for the Blue Devils, if you would think. This has just been impressive. And what's most impressive is the confidence with which this Clemson team's been able to play. They're taking tough shots, making tough shots. They're getting back, identifying the ball, playing good defense, too. Mack having himself a basketball game. We talked about how difficult he is to defend tough matchup on the floor because of versatility. He can step out, make good reads. Here, even setting the ball screen, or so you thought, slips the screen, gets to the basket, and the finish. And when you're feeling it, you got to find the hot hand. He's got it going on. He's got great body language. The whole crowd has great body language. We got a good one brewing here. Absolutely. Mack with 14, Sims with 12, Clemson up by nine as we check in with Brooke. Uh, you talked about that good body language, John. I was just watching the players in that last huddle, and you'd think, you know, with a score like this, they might be kind of tight. Completely the opposite. Amir Sims over there bobbing his head to Baby Shark during the huddle. <laughs> oh, wait, what was the song that you almost got stuck in your head? If you don't have Baby Shark stuck I'd in rather, your head. Right? I'd rather it be Baby Shark than All-Star. Well, I got news for you, Brooke. We were both bobbing our heads to Baby Shark during the break as well. So. You, can, you can't help it. You yeah. can't. <laughs> Dawes with the balls we mentioned from Newark. A lot of Looked switching. at schools like Seton Hall, St. John's, then decided to come down to ACC country. A lot of switching so far in this Duke possession, which means you've got to communicate, but also understand where shooters are going to be. One extra pass, somebody should be open. Good shot, Faye. It's good offense. Jones. And a block is the call. Jones shaking up. You hope Trey Jones is all right. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just not a fan. I, I know it's a part of basketball, and people go crazy every time I say this. I, I just feel like the restricted arc should basically be the three-point line. The guy's attacking the rim. It, it's a good defensive play. I, I get it. I, I would just rather see more plays at the rim, more, more, more jumping up, trying to block the shot, walling up as, as players have been taught to do. So it just comes down on the arm a little bit. He's a tough kid. The common man, right, has no idea how tough these kids are, yeah. what they persevere through on a daily basis. Like, look, 
you get to a point when you're 40 years old like myself, you wake up and you go, man, this is going to be tough just getting out of bed. These kids work day in, day out, overcome injuries, get themselves back and play at such a high level. It's impressive when you, when you understand what they go through. Jones misses the first. Tyson into the game now for Clemson. Hit a couple of big threes in limited minutes in the first half. Tyson's the kind of guy, he's going to ride the wave with the confidence of his team. His team's been pretty confident. And Jones will get a breather. O'Connell back in. Goldwire will handle the ball now for the Blue Devils. Another interesting lineup for Duke. Matthew Hurt hasn't really been too effective in this game. Little Trey Jones. Vernon Carey's obviously going to be the focal point of this offense. They're going to try to get some offense off their defense here as they continue to press. Broken by Clemson. Good look from the corner. Well, you can't ask for better execution. Well, that's how you break the press. You, you beat pressure by attacking. Jack White. Big three for the Blue Devils. And, and as you said, we're right next to the Duke bench, and that bench is up. Positive group. Stolen away. Goldwire. Couldn't convert the layup. Nah, keep pressure. Keep pressuring it yeah. until Clemson shows that they can actually convert on the other end. I, I like the pressure. The pressure is going to pick up the pace of the game, and, and I, I would take Duke in that style. 6 0 run Duke. And a little more standing around right now offensively than we saw in the first half of the Tigers. Sims one on one with Carey. the same angle on this Jack White three-pointer and this was one I would have said is good the, tra the Trey Trey Jones one didn't look so good off the glass but but Jack White had that thing knocked down from the second it left his hands and that was a big shot Duke's been positive on this comeback and, and when you're trying to pick it up one second left in the shot clock here it's got to be a quick one real quick one. wow real quick and Brad Brown now is saying how could the horn go off so quickly? And I think Mike Eads is telling him, even if it shows one, it, it might have been yeah. point something, but it's only going to show one. Brownell was livid because it felt to him like the buzzer sounded as soon as the ball was inbounded. Well, it basically did. Yep. Double team on Carey. And out of bounds to Clemson. You know, the double team from the back side is something we saw them practice and shoot around today, and I love it. It forces Vernon Carey. To, the only thing he can do is dribble the ball out. Once he dribbles the ball out, he's less less of an impact player. And forcing the ball over the top, just not the right pass. Jones has returned, and Duke will keep the pressure on. Head to the free throw line. He tried to one up John Newman. And it just kind of reminds you of the type of mindset this Clemson team has, not only coming into this game, but executing throughout this game. They will be the aggressor. I mean, I, I didn't see this coming. He, he attacked with a purpose, and that's what you ask your guys to do. If you're playing a team like Duke, a top five team, likely the best team in this conference, you've got to be the aggressor. A lot of the students probably stayed a little bit past curfew last night watching that football game that went deep into the night and they have drowned their sorrows a little bit in the wee hours of the morning but they have recovered nicely for this basketball game here tonight. Students are student athletes. I don't know if students have <laughs> curfew. That's part of college. <laughs> curfew. Let's see if Matthew Zone. Hurt can, can impact this game. He can. Yeah. When in doubt, give it to the big fella in the middle. As that ball swings, you've got to have good ball pressure. Otherwise, you allow that pass over the top. And with the defense rotating, you don't have that backside help. So you've got to have good ball pressure to disallow that pass. Trap. Can't get the shot off. Three to shoot. 
Dawes forces it. And Clemson in a bit of a drought, and Duke can tire take the lead. I'd say it's a drought, but it's also due to the Duke pressure. Duke pressure has taken the rhythm out of the game for Clemson. Vernon Carey, if he gets position, he's got you beat. Here, you're helping, you're trying to get over the top. No ball pressure, throw over the top. He's got one of some of the best hands from any big in the country. He does. Hands are everything. And often, if you don't have good hands, you get yelled at by your coach for passing it to somebody. They say, no, your personnel, the guy can't catch. Not Vernon Carey, you throw it anywhere near the rim. Foul on Sims, his second. He's gone to the bench again, likely just until the under-12 media timeout. And it's over the backboard, back to the Tigers. You know, missed shot's okay for Duke. I, obviously, you want it to go in, but a missed shot, you still at least get your defense. Missed shot out of bounds, dead ball. You get your defense set. You're able to apply pressure and possibly another turnover. Boy, good awareness and hustle there by Newman to save that ball on the backcourt. There is still an eternity left in this game, and Duke has dialed up the pace and the intensity with this press in the second half. Dawes using the screen, in and out. Oh, that should have been a switch. Duke's bench calling it out. Over the top to Carey. Tried to carve out some space, and he draws a foul. Always under control. Got another good one coming your way out of the Big 12. Following us tonight, it'll be number six Kansas in Norman to take on the Sooners. John Shabby, Jay Billis have the call for you live on ESPN and on streaming on the ESPN app. talked about it in the open year Duke loses to Stephen F Austin and everybody starts to discredit them they're not that good they're not the same team they were they were last year of course they're not the same team they were last year doesn't mean they can't grow into becoming a great team come March April same thing goes for everybody in this country a lot of people have said the product might be down well, it just requires the team to be an effective team with good balance that's gonna be what wins in Martin quite frankly that's what's won the last few championships anyway mm -hmm. Great movement without the ball again, and a much-needed bucket for the Tigers. And that's the tough matchup for Matthew Hurt. He, he has struggled to defend that action with Mack. Just, just said, no absolutes. But they've got a problem with Stanley on the bench with four fouls. So Joey Baker's hurt. Wendell Moore is hurt. Limited options right now for the Blue Devils. Scott, good cut again. Sims, and he'll head to the line. What an atmosphere and what a game we got going on at Little John. The Clemson Tigers have held the lead for the majority of the night. They have led by as many as nine. They're up four right now. Duke's last lead was back with 12 minutes to go in the first half. But you know what? They could lead for 39 minutes and 59 yep. seconds. <laughs> Still lose the game. Yep. I mean, All that matters is the last game. Yeah, I think it's more about maintaining this rhythm they've got. They, they've got a good confidence when they move the basketball. And Duke has had a tough time defending them when they move the ball around the perimeter. Sims, a 76% free throw shooter, missed them both. Extended pressure here from Clemson. thing I'd be concerned about with, with extending my pressure is giving up an easy lob to Vernon Carey here that the zone defense is going to know where he's at at all times Jack White just didn't see the help seven Mack was the help came up with the steal you know, it's not even help if you're in zone he's there so you've got to be aware that there's backside there in position in the zone Scott thought about it couldn't get the three off Quarter jumper short for Mack, and White with a rebound for Duke. Three, three, three. Trey Jones, it's and it's a two-point game. And Trey Jones had great recognition of the fact that so many guys were running back, trying to body up Vernon Carey, which meant he's being occupied, the paint's going to be open. Again, big, big minutes for Goldwire for the Blue Devils. He's on Dawes right now. Sims tries to turn the corner. Double team. And turned it over. 
Jones with a transition three, and the Blue Devils have the lead. They're going to check at the next media timeout to see if it's a two or a three. Initially ruled a three. Trey Jones starting to take over this basketball game, and the recipe for Duke may have been to slop it up a little bit with the pressure and then just seal the deal. This is an experienced basketball team understanding how to defend, and this is a gutsy shot. Absolutely love it. Definitely a three. Look at tonight's Wendy's Wooden Watch, and the Duke Blue Devils have a couple of the 25 mid-season Wooden Award candidates, Vernon Carey Jr. and Trey Jones, both having very productive nights for the Blue Devils, who have gone back on top. That bucket was a three for Trey Jones. Duke with its first lead in a long time. And Mr. Crispin, Cassius Stanley's back into the game with four fouls. Look at Carey oh. stepping through. What a move. Well, first off, the anticipation. The anticipation defensively to take that away. And, and, well, I mean, he fights over a screen. I don't know if you can really screen the man, but you know, he fights through the screen and then the Euro step and just feathery finish. I mean, that's 6'10", 270 making that play. That's scary. Carey's the kind of guy that, that so many people look at and say, kind of a tweener. Yeah, he's also a winner. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think that's where we miss on so many guys. We, we try to find the perfect spot. What a finish. Great offensive rebound. We were talking during the break. There's been very little offensive yeah. rebounding to speak up for either team in this game. That's number four for Clemson, three for Duke. And as you said, that's a win for Clemson. Yeah. Well, part of it is Clemson hadn't missed a lot of shots. Both teams shooting just over 50% of the night. Jones in traffic. Yeah, he's another one. Just a straight winner. Look out. Comes up with a steal and a foul committed by Scott. And when I say winners, look, winners are not the ones that get a certain outcome. You know, wins and losses don't, don't mean you're a winner or not. Winners are the guys that do all the little things right, that handle pressure well that have good body language, that make their teammates better in tough situations, that, that play hurt. He's tough, both mentally and physically, and the team gets picked up because of it. Should be a jump. Hell ball. Possession arrows gives it to do. You know, I've, I've got to say, the second half, it's, it's been one nice run for Clemson, but offensively, they haven't moved and cut the way they did in the first half. It hasn't been with a purpose. They need a nice little run to get this crowd back yep. into it and feel it again. Another touch for Carey. Surrounded. And he'll head back to the free throw line. <laughs> Saturday, UFC 246 in Las Vegas. Features Conor McGregor's long-awaited return to the Octagon. We'll take on Cowboy starting at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific in the main event on pay-per-view. To order the main card in English and Spanish, go to ESPNplus.com slash PPV and be sure to download the ESPN app if you're watching on your mobile device. Conor McGregor seemed to be as, as quiet as he could possibly be about this fight. He's like the subdued Conor kind of McGregor. Because subdued is not, yeah, like that's still, not his best card. Dude. No. <laughs> that's not his lane. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> He's just he's speeding in the fast lane. Yes. Yeah. More pressure. Nearly a steal. Sims. Mack working hard. Is fouled. The Duke's pressure defense just has Clemson out of sorts. You know, we were, in, we were talking at the half, and I said, man, I almost would go zone for two possessions just to eliminate the rhythm from the game for Clemson offensively. The pressure has done the same exact thing. It's taken flow out of the game, and when you, you eliminate that good flow that was going, Clemson has not been the same. Clemson scored 40 points in the first half, only 14 in almost in over 11 minutes of action here in the second half. Yeah, let me say, you don't win with a scheme. You don't win with a game plan. You win with the, the necessary adjustments you've got to make. 
Boy, Matt has played with so much bounce here tonight. Oh, it's good screening, too. You know, these teams prepare for those out-of-bounds underneath, and they still set such good screens that you get a guy open. Mack averaging 11 and a half has 18 already in this game. Stanley playing with four fouls. Drowns it. A long two for Cassius Stanley. They got to get it over. They got three seconds and they will. Sims corner three. You having any fun? It's usually pretty good in here when I lay out. <laughs> it is tied. Coaches are hollering from the benches. Nobody can hear anything in this place. Shot clock at three. Jones sees it. But can't hit it. And an errant pass by Scott gives it back to Duke. Timeout, Mike Krzyzewski. Opportunity missed there from Clemson. Just a bad pass. But Clemson, a big answer. I mean, look, the answer is everything. You're down three, you break the pressure, and your leading scorer hits a big one. Clemson still got a chance here tied up. Kevin, thank you. Well, as you know, John, tough winning on the road, especially in conference play. Duke trying to do it tonight. Louisville trying to do it tonight. Kansas will try to do it in Norman, but nothing coming easy. Jack White with his second three of the game. And what did Brad Brownell tell us at shoot-around about Jack White? This guy comes in, he was barely on the scouting report and ends up getting four threes last time they played. It's still White's career high for most threes made in a game. Did that last January. They have started trading the lead back and forth in recent minutes after the Tigers held the lead for most of the night. Foul on Goldwine. And better movement that possession offensively. They gotta make foul shots. Both teams in the bonus with 6.13 to go. This is where you, you kind of you get a feel for whether a team is gonna finish with confidence or not, whether they can step up and make foul shots. So they just missed two in a row a few possessions ago, and, and they're all gonna matter. Her and Scott at the line. Grad transfer from Tulsa. <laughs> Made them both. And I think this is a really good offensive lineup for Duke. So it's interesting to see. Looks like they're going back to the man. You've got to cover the perimeter and protect the basket. Stanley for three. I would have fed it inside once. At least once on that possession. Especially going to the man. You want to see if that double's coming again. Sims with a crossover on Carey. A little bit too strong. Newman fighting for the rebound, and he's earned the Tigers another possession. Newman is just fantastic. His energy is infectious. Yep. Contagious is a bad thing. Infectious is a good thing. <laughs> Sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina. Bad body language is contagious. Energy plays are infectious. Oh, 
Newman a lefty driving that way. Ah, Good D was. by Stanley, but they double him, and Sims is all alone. <laughs> oh, man, I'm glad you said, yeah, he's a lefty. He, he was dead set on going left yeah. and still found a way to make the play. Clemson back on top. Boy, Sims got all tangled up with Carey, but managed to hang on to the rebound. He's just cool about it. He really is. Yep. He's got a good demeanor. For Clemson, you want to be careful of the basketball. You have good on-the-ball defenders, guys that get their hands in passing lanes. Matt, little step-back jumper. If you're just joining us, it's basically been 35 minutes and change of this. This kind of atmosphere and this kind of intensity. Carey gets a touch, swings it. And a baseline finish for Jack White. Big bucket for Duke. Good idea with the double team, but you've got to be prepared for that pass. Now, part of it is say, if you're doubling from the backside, you shouldn't allow that pass to the corner. But defense has to scramble out of it. Last thing you can do is give up a layup. Boy, big time screen from Sims. Knocked out of Scott's hands. He's yelling it's a foul. And the Duke yeah, bench is yelling that it's their ball. It, it was definitely off of Scott. But this could be one of those that was a foul. But they didn't call it. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. A fair bit at stake for the Tigers here tonight if they can win. Have not beaten a top three AP poll team since 2001. Have not beaten a top five Duke team since 2009. And Mr. Crispin trying to knock off UNC, Carolina, and Duke yeah. in consecutive games for the first time in, oh, 30 years. Yeah, and I don't care what you say about it being a down game for North Carolina. That's still a great victory on the road that followed up with a win against Duke. That would be massive. Yeah, that, these games have been close, too. They, they've been in games, and I think that part of that is the way they play. They're very well coached. They execute, they're tough to match up against. Simple to a Villanova, right? Villanova's got five versatile players. There's another one. He just has not been able to be stopped tonight. Tevin Mack. Tevin Mack and John Newman have just been constantly in motion tonight, exploiting mismatches when they've been there, cutting without the ball. They've both been tremendous. That'll tie a season high for Mack with 22. Carey spins into trouble. Clemson ball. Great communication defensively, and that's that's part of the plan. You've got to know where Kerry is at all times. Sims away in, and the lead grows to five. Jones with a step in jumper and a foul against Duke. Called for the foul. For Sims, you only get that call if you have position. You only have position if you anticipate, if you rotate, if you fight. Got to credit Amir Sims for the job he's doing, not only on the offensive end. They play through him a lot. Look at him. He, he communicates. He gets back to his man. Maintains position. There you go. Pretty easy call. There's always a brave one in the bunch. <laughs> He's not alone. They are scattered around the building. A few of them directly behind the Duke bench just to our right. One of two for Sims. Six point game. Three minutes to go. Krzyzewski staying with the same five that he's had in there for a few minutes. 
Sims saves it, but threw it to White. And a block is called, and Jack White, with great anticipation to pick off that pass, will be heading to the free throw. Yeah, it's funny, it's that situation, how many times you say it, never save it under your own basket. Positioned by Sims, just good anticipation by Jack White. It's a great call. John Newman was terrific on that defensive play. Coming in, backside help, taking any entry passes away from Vernon Carey. And Jack White's been a big reason why Duke still has a chance to win this game. He has been really good in it. By knocking down threes, he's been a good ball mover. He's been a floor spacer, and that's really all he needs to do. One of two. Both teams leaving some points on the line today. An extended pressure. This is when you got to be careful. You have a, an elite on the ball defender in Trey Jones. Jim spinning and hitting and is fouled. Did I mention the Joker? Denver Nuggets. There's a lot of that to Sims' game. You can shoot the three. Nothing is explosive, right? And I'm not taking anything away from him. It's poised. It's under control. It's calculated and effective. He was named co-player of the week in the ACC last week for what he did in the Carolina game. He's off to a great start this week with 25 points, 9 rebounds, and 5 assists. Goldwire knocks down a three. What a huge bucket that is for the Blue Devils. You know, that's not bad defense. They're there on the catch. You, you just got to close out a little bit harder, but at the same time, you don't want to close out and give up a driving lane. It's just a big shot from Justin Goldwire. That's bold. I give credit. That, that's bold. That, I, bold is beautiful to me. <laughs> Because of the group on the floor, he's probably option number five offensively. And not a wide open shot. Yeah. But again, they'll be talking about this one on Sports Center later on. Sports Center coming your way after Kansas and Oklahoma. Kenny Bain and John Anderson bring it your way. Conversation with Trey Jones of Duke. Why the Chiefs Titans Week 10 matchup was a turning point for both teams. And the latest in the ever evolving Major League Baseball story tonight's news. Alex Cora and the Boston Red Sox have mutually agreed to part company. It's interesting we mentioned that to the coaches, you know, stealing signs. And they say everybody in our game knows what we do anyway. Right. It's just a different type of game. Again, we said you, you, know, you win with counters, you win with adjustments in this game. No one ever wins with a set play. More pressure from the Blue Devils. Clemson gets it over. Newman. Oh, why not? If he misses, it's time and score. If he makes it, it's great. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes. yes. White can't hit. Carey. Gosh. Soft touch. Well, that's going Duke. Yeah. That's Duke. White knocked it out off of trap. You've got it. You've got to be strong with the basketball. You also have to be assertive and aggressive. This is exactly what they did here. No, no, no. Time and score. Oh, why not? That's, that's it. That's winning plays right there. Breaking the press, shooting a three in a situation that some may question. That's a winning play. The problem is you got to be strong with the basketball. I'll tell you, Sims has 25. Max got 22. Newman's got 12 of the noisiest points yeah, you're right. you've ever seen. And they're going to look at this one to see whose ball it should be. It was initially ruled to be Duke's ball out of bounds off of Trap, and the officials will have a look at the, at the replay for this now that we're inside the last two minutes. Yeah, and, and live, it looked like it was off of Trap. And you've got to get low, right? you got to get low. The last thing you want to do, especially when you're in the quarter when the Trap might be coming, is just stand up. you got to get low, be strong with the basketball. If defense comes up, you got to be able to rip through. It's really been a great basketball game right from the get-go. This kind of atmosphere, this kind of intensity. And as Clemson coming off that historic win, if you will, over Carolina on the weekend at Chapel Hill. Yeah, trying to be Duke, and it still looks like it went yeah, out I think of the right? Yeah. But, I mean, you're bringing the ball over the top into the hands of the defender. You've got to rip through, be strong. 
also got to keep your head up. You got to see where the double's coming from. If the double's coming from the baseline side, be aware, know where your second pass is. Sometimes when you watch it long enough or enough times, you start to convince yourself that something else yes. happened. Yeah. Let me just go with my, my first thought. That's off. The yeah, I was going to say, how's that working for you? <laughs> well, look at me. <laughs> Obviously, a huge call. The Duke can get the ball back on this play. And the ball on the court was Duke ball. And if you coach K, you're talking about you're out of bounds underneath. You want to be able to score. You want to be able to put your team in a situation where you get an easy basket. And sometimes the easy basket is just getting Vernon Carey positioned. If you can get him positioned on an out of bounds underneath, just get the ball in and get it, get it inside. He's been dominant and the great. The, that soft touch has been effective. Cassius Stanley's played a bunch of minutes with four fouls. Vernon Carey is now playing with four fouls. Nobody for Clemson has four. Cassius Stanley lost a lot of that feel and rhythm for the game when he went out with four fouls. He was effective from three. He was attacking the basket, good at transition. And I remember one of the foul calls, it was actually his third, but he picked up his fourth moments later, was when initially it was called a charge yes, you're and right. changed to a block on the play underneath the bucket. No. It was the right call. Yes. All we need is two stops in a row and a rebound every time. Every time. It makes it every time. No hands. Block out every time. Right side the huddle here. Man. These millennials, don't they know up shots are not good? <laughs> or is that just when you develop a few extra chins like uh, yourself? Yeah. Another thing that's not going to get better as you get older. Whose ball is it? I, I, don't, I can't imagine there's that much of a question. I feel like it's impossible to overturn it. Right? If that's the call on the, the floor, it seems near impossible to overturn it. And now... Mike Eads wants Paul Sells to come in and have a look. Doug Shouse was there before. <laughs> I'm sticking with uh, my first one. Yeah. I think it's off the track. Yeah, that, that's what happens when you're not strong with the basketball. I mean, those are the fundamentals that, that are lacking at times. And Mike Eads just coming over to the table and saying they could not find enough evidence to overturn it. So he could have just said we got it right. <laughs> We're not braggadocious like that, I guess. Minute 34 to go. Good D by Mack to make White put the brakes on. Inside to carry. Out of bounds again. Clemson ball. They, they want to take that. Duke now wants them to take a look at it. And I'm sure we'll spend the next five minutes doing that. I felt like Vernon Carey was in the paint for about five seconds. I don't, think, I don't know if he ever left the paint. That happens a lot on out of bounds underneath when you're looking to get the ball. This is where making foul shots is tough, too. You take all these stops, all the rhythm's gone, and one team's got to go finish the game and make foul shots. Yeah. It's, it's tough. And let's see if this one's a little more clear-cut than the last one. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so Stanley slapped at the ball. But did he slap it off the fingertips of a Clemson oh player? Gosh. Well, again, what the, what's the call on the floor? The call on the floor is Clemson ball. I don't think you can overturn it. This is going to be another one where it's – this is actually more not enough to overturn, if, if it's in my opinion. Not enough to overturn. The other one was, yo, we got it right. As much as you want to get it right, do you wish that, say, there were a limited number of challenges? Yeah, you can go to the monitor in the last two minutes, but only if you've got a challenge left. Do you, would you like to see it more like baseball or football in that regard? I, I would because I believe rhythm and flow is everything in this game, especially yeah. the way the game has evolved over the past few years. But at the same time, fans will see it, and that causes so many issues. So if fans can see it over and over again that they got it wrong, down the stretch, every play matters. I, I understand why there's a need to get it right. But this is not the best way to do it. I, don't, I still think fourth official sitting up in a booth going, yep, this way. 
Make it simple. I can do it. Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of feel for the officials on this. Yeah. Huh? I, I mean, these are hard calls to make. But also, a lot of the things that they are doing that we don't like, they're tasked to do. The, the flopping or anti-flopping, the, the over-freedom of movement. Uh, there's all these things. You know, the, the hook and hold, all these things that drive us nuts, these points of emphasis. They're tasked to do it, and they're held accountable to do so. And once again, Mike Eads is asking for the third official, in this case, this time, Doug Shows to come in and have a look. And this would tell me that they likely don't think they can overturn this call. So Stand we have a great game, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go anywhere, folks. That is so close. It's going to be Clemson ball. Clemson ball. And Mike Geach just said the same thing. Didn't have yeah. enough evidence to overturn it. You know, quite and frankly, it might have been off of Clemson, but not enough to overturn it. Wow. Well, now you got to deal with the pressure, right? Yeah. This game deserves a good minute and 20 without any more reviews. It's been a heck of a basketball game. They get it over. Watch your run and jump. Three to shoot. Trap. Scott. Tevin Mack getting some work done and draws the foul. What an effort by Mack. He has had one heck of a basketball game. Yep. Now we said it coming in. He's one of the toughest matchups on the floor, but he also makes himself available. Not a lot of offensive rebounds in this game. But Tevin Mack has just not stopped playing. He has won the effort game in this one. He had a recent cold stretch, four games where he didn't put up big numbers. But 31 points in his last two games coming into this one, and 22 and 7 rebounds so far here tonight. Mm, missed him both. Yeah. Still a two possession game. Contest without fouling. Perry will take a three. And another rebound by Tevin Mack. Baseline, Newman. Why not? Another one of those. Maybe pull it out, but he said, I can make a bucket. Hey, conventional wisdoms for conventional outcomes. <laughs> Basket due, timeout. The lead still six, less than 16 seconds to go. Sims, Matt, and Newman have been extraordinary tonight. Let's go back to Kevin Connors in the studio. Kevin, looking forward to that one. Hope it's as much fun as this one has been. It's still a six-point ball game, though. You're going to get pressure. A quick steal in a basket makes this thing serious. So you've got to have an outlet long. Someone's got to be open around the half-court line, come back to the basketball, because there's going to be a lot of denial, a lot of pressure, looking for that initial trap, too. Got to be aware of timeouts. Clemson with two. None for Duke. They were hoping to celebrate like this last night. Tonight might make last night feel just a little bit better for these Clemson fans. A little bit. Still soon. Oh, this has been a terrific environment, too. And, and the product on the floor, if you're a Clemson fan, is something I'd come out and watch. It's fun basketball. And when they're playing with confidence, they're dangerous. Think of the teams like Auburn, even Baylor, the teams with limited absolutes. 
they're really difficult to match up with. They're hard to figure out, hard to defend. And even defensively, Clemson's been good all day. But you still have to close the door here. Realistically, if they can make one more free throw, yes. it's over. One more free throw and just make them take at least seven seconds off the clock if you give up a basket. It's like, too, if you do give up a basket, don't wait to get the ball in bounds. Don't let the defense get set. If someone's available, get it in right quickly. Big. Oh. Mm. They're gonna make this fan base sweat it out, right. aren't they? Clemson is 10 for 21 from the line, and look at Duke, they're basically the same, 10 for 20. But how's Clemson winning that? That's the thing, 10 for 21 from the free throw line. O'Connell back in, three point shooter for Duke. Jones. And that'll do it. Clemson. Takes down Duke. We lost four straight, but we had time to go home for Christmas break. We got ourselves, we boot, come back with a clear mind, and we've just been grinding hard every day and it's starting to show every day. This school could have used some redemption after the loss last night to LSU. What does a win like this do for this entire program? Hey, man, it's unbelievable. Like you said, we just won at UNC, and we just won against Duke back-to-back, -back, which has never been done. I just want to thank God. Like I said, I'm so proud of my teammates and coaching staff, and I love my school. What else did it take? Because this was not a solo effort. Who else contributed for you tonight? Everybody, one through ten on our team, came out to play tonight. That was coach's game plan. We we're gonna try to rotate a lot of guys. Everybody was ready to play, and we just all excited. I'm just so proud of my guys for playing together. I bet you're gonna learn upset in sign language now, aren't you? Oh yeah, definitely. If I could spell it right now, I would. But my team, my family, right now, is singing the cheese. The little school song, and I can't wait to sing it with them. All right, thanks, Amir. Thank you. Dan, back to you. Thank you, Brooke. What a celebration here at Little John as Clemson beats the Blue Devils 79-72. For Brooke, John Crispin, I'm Dan Schulman. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. More great basketball coming your way. Let's send you out to Norman, Oklahoma right now, along with Jay Billis. Here's John Shambi.